So how do we graph exponential decay functions? Decay functions and growth functions have the same parent function, okay? That parent function is still y equals b to the x. The only difference is that with growth, b is greater than 1, and for decay, b is between 0 and 1. Okay, like a half or three quarters or anything like that. Okay, so this is the parent function. This is the most basic. You can also have a transformed function where if you have a times b to the x minus h plus k, right, where the a will stretch, compress, reflect, the h moves right and left, and the k goes up and down. And just like with growth, if the k moves up, your horizontal asymptote moves up. K moves down, same thing. Okay, um, also just like growth, you always plot the points first, 0, 1, and 1, b. So, as a, to give the general shape of this graph, I'll show you what that looks like on this graph over here. 0, 1, b, you know, at 0, 1. And then we know that b is between 0 and 1. So, you can really just pick any point between 0 and 1. And notice that it's lower than the point last time. So, once I draw my asymptote, right, uh, for the parent function, this hasn't moved. My horizontal asymptote's at y equals 0. Last time, we were wa with growth, we watched these things start low and then go up. With decay, they're going to start high and then go through these points and approach the asymptote on the other side. So these start high, go through the points, and then approach the asymptote on the right rather than on the left with the growth. The domain is still all real numbers. And the range we get from our horizontal asymptote. My horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And all of these numbers, all of these y values are greater than 0. OK, so let's look at this first example of y equals 2 times 1 fourth to the x. So this time, uh, just noticing the transformations. Will this graph move right or left? It, it won't move right or left, right? Because this x has nothing attached to it up here. Will it move up or down? No, it won't move up or down. Since it doesn't move up or down, the horizontal asymptote doesn't move. Where's my horizontal asymptote? At y equals 0. All right, so y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. OK, so I always start by plotting the point. 0, 1, 1, b. So what's the base of the exponent? 1 fourth, because 1 fourth is being raised to the x. Now we have to deal with this 2 out in front. This 2 is our a. So this is going to, is it going to stretch or compress the function? It's going to stretch because 2 is bigger than 1. So how do I deal with this 2? The a does what? It multiplies the y values. So we take our y values. 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 times a fourth is a half. OK, now this should stretch our function. So I have the point 0, 2, 1, 1 half. So really, whenever you're doing these, you should do the, write down 0, 1, 1, b. If there's an a, multiply by a. And then this is where you would always plot. OK, because once you plot, then you, it's easier to move them right or left or up or down. But since these have been plotted, and I don't have to move right or left or up or down, I'm ready to go ahead and draw my curve through this. We can see from these two points that the curve must come down through them from left to right. So I've got my curve. 
It's decay because it's getting smaller as time goes on, right? Or as the x's increase, the y's will decrease. The domain of this function is all real numbers because all of the x's work, but the y's for the range. I look at my horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So are all the y's greater than or less than this line? They're all greater than, so all the y's are greater than 0. Okay, in this next example, it is almost uh, the exact same steps, except for this time we have a negative. And what is this negative going to do? It's going to reflect... Oh. It's going to reflect it over our horizontal asymptote, okay? Or over the x-axis, really. So, I always start off with the points 0, 1, 1, b. b was 0.75. Then I have to go through and multiply the y values by a. So this becomes 0, negative 2. And 1, <coughs> negative 2 times 0.75 is negative 1.5. All right. Um, does this move left or right or up or down? It, no, yeah, it doesn't do any of those things because we don't have anything attached to this x up in the, in the exponent or some extra numbers over here in the side. But we'll see that in the next two examples. So my horizontal asymptote did not move because I didn't move up or down. So this is y equals 0. Now I'm going to plot my point 0, negative 2. 1, negative 1.5. So with decay, it always approaches the asymptote the more that you go to the right. And if you think about it, the last example looked like this. And if we're reflecting it over the axis, let me get rid of that. If we're reflecting it over the axis, it should look like this, coming up through them and approaching the asymptote. So the domain of this function is all real numbers. And the range, I look at the asymptote, it's 0, right? All of these y values are, all of them are less than 0. In this next example, we have a whole lot of the transformations happening. All right, but I'm still going to always start with my 0, 1, 1, b, and multiplying those y values by a. So I'm going to start with, 0, 1, 1, b. Well, my b is 2 thirds. Okay? So I took care of my 0, 1, 1, b. Now I'm going to multiply those y values by a. Before I shift left or right or up or down, I'm going to multiply the y values by a, which is 3. So that'd be 1 times 3 is 3. And 2 thirds times 3 is 2. Okay, so lightly, I'm going to plot those points 0, 3, and 1, 2. Notice that this graph counts by 2. All right. Now, I have to look at these other things. What does this plus 1 do? So we have a plus 1 and this minus 3. The plus 1 is going to move it left 1, right? Because that's where my h is. So x minus h plus k. This minus 3 is going to move it down 3. So again, anytime that it's up in the exponent, it kind of does the opposite of what you would think. Plus makes it move left. So each of these points I need to take and I need to move them left 1 and down 3. So I take this move left 1, down 3. And now I'm at the point negative 1, 0. Moving this point left 1, down 3, I'm at 0, negative 1. Now, whenever these points shifted left 3, what else shifted? Or, I'm sorry, down 3. What, uh, what else shifted down 3? Yeah, this last number 
Most of the time it's not there, so it's zero. But whatever this last number is, that's the horizontal asymptote. So down 3 puts me here at negative 3. So y equals negative 3. Draw the curve through those points. I knew it was going to be above the asymptote because this wasn't negative, right? I didn't have a negative A. So I knew it didn't reflect. What's the domain? The domain is going to be all real numbers because it goes forever left and right. And yeah, the, the range are all the y's greater than what? Greater than negative 3. It's always either greater than or less than your asymptote. All of these are sitting above it, so all the y's are greater than negative 3. So again, just going through those steps, do 0, 1, 1, b, multiply the y values by a, and then shift them based on your h and k. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Here we have 3 times 0.25 to the x plus 3. So what's the base? What's b for my 0, 1, 1, b? The 0.25. And then I take those b's and I multiply them by a, or the y values and I multiply them by a. What's the a value? So I've got the point 0, 3, 1, 0.75. Okay, so I'm going to plot those points 0, 3, I could actually touch the axis here, and 1.75. Okay, now there's nothing attached to this x, so it does not move left or right. But this plus 3 makes it go up 3. Up three. So each of these points, I'm going to shift up 3. So I count 1, 2, 3 from that point, and 3 from this point. So my new points were 0, 6, and 1, 3.75. I should, also, I should always list out the last two points, like the, the final points that you're graphing, you should list those out. Um, and then this plus 3 means my asymptote is at 3. I draw the curve through those points, let it approach the asymptote. The domain of this function is all real numbers. And the range, all the y's are greater than 3. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay.